Rabbis, uh, um, however you feel led to, to go this morning, um, we're all keen to hear what you've got to say to us. Well, Pastor Casper, it's uh, always an honor and a blessing to be here. Uh, we're living in these prophetic times right now. We're seeing the evil all over the world. I mean, I always say that every program that we that we do together, but it seems like the evil is getting worse and worse and worse. For us as believers in Yeshua and Jesus, it's a sign without setting any dates that the time is near. That's the sign. And it's one of the signs that Yeshua spoke about in, uh, you know, when his disciples asked him, what, what will be the signs of your coming? And this is one of them. So we should, in on one hand, rejoice. When we see this, because we know our Redeemer is coming back and we're going to meet him in the air and go home. But on the other hand, we have to also be with love and brokenhearted for those who are uh, suffering all over the world right now, who don't know Yeshua, who don't have the hope. And that's what we're. That's why you and I and all the believers, all the body, why are we here today? We're here for that reason, for the reason of spreading the love and the gospel. We've been positioned for such a time like this. And for me, I mean, it's it's overwhelming to see how the Lord has trusted us, Pastor Casper, to live at such a time like this. We've been chosen for this time. And uh, each one of us has to go and do whatever we can through the power of the Holy Spirit, wherever God has positioned us to be, you in the States, I in Israel, it doesn't matter where we are, and uh, get the message out and comfort those who don't know Yeshua. Absolutely, amen. We we are here to comfort each other. And um, I think since the seventh of October this past year, um, I, I've just been feeling grieved every morning, waking up, knowing what's going on over there, and praying for you and protection. And um, I, I think a lot of people still don't understand the conflict that's going on here. Um, why it's there? I mean, what what is the the root issue here? So maybe you can expound on that for everyone. Well, let's let's touch on the root issue outside of the Bible. Outside of the Bible, the Arabs think that Israel belongs to them. Well, it's all thinks the 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 land belongs to them, and they've been programmed. A lot of them, all these terrorist organizations, to do everything they can to get this Palestine that belongs to them back and to kill every single Jew that exists. Well, that's that's nothing new under the sun, right? That's been like that for thousands of years. The conflict, the real conflict is, number one, we're going to address a few things today, Pastor Casper. Right. What is Palestine? Is Palestine in the Bible? What is the root of Palestine? Because a lot of people don't know, and if I think that's one of the main issues here. Number two, where did this battle really start? It started in the garden. Genesis 3.15, that's when it started. I'm going to throw in some Bible verses today and paraphrase here and there, but I do encourage people to grab their Bibles and to go through the full versions of the Bible and just read as I'm going through some of these Bible verses. Genesis 3.15, we know the famous Bible verse. I will put an uh, enmity between you and the woman and between her offspring, your offspring, and hers. And so that is the battle here. The battle is over Israel. Satan from that time on and his demons have been after that seed, have been after the firstborn. We saw that with the uh, with the uh, proclamation of uh, of Yeshua being born in Bethlehem. Today, the Savior has been born in the city of Bethlehem. And you'll find the baby lying in the major. And since that time of the major, Satan has been trying to do everything he can to kill the firstborn. That's why Yeshua had to move, had to go to Egypt, right? He went to Egypt because Herod was trying to kill all the firstborn males. Why? What's that all about? Well, the agenda is Genesis 3.15. And so all through the Israel is known as the firstborn. And so this is why when Israel was in slavery for 400 and something years in Egypt, what was the last plague? God said, you want to kill my firstborn? I'm going after your firstborn. And so it was the killing of the firstborn males in Egypt that brought Pharaoh to the situation where he said, go, just leave right now. And so we see that spiritual warfare. Uh Gaza, Palestine, all these things in the Bible. Uh, Isaiah 66, verse 8, we know that Israel was born as a nation. That, that was the first prophecy that was, you know, to show us the second coming of Jesus, Yeshua. Can, Israel, can a nation be born in a day? Isaiah 68. And so we know that that's Israel. Since the time, Pastor Casper, that Israel has been a nation back in the land, that prophecy being fulfilled in 1948, 
We have never seen a war against Israel like this. This is an end time sign. This is a prophetic sign. And so, once again, it started in Genesis 3.15. It continues after the second boom here in 1948. And uh, if we look at the Bible, uh, Gaza. Gaza is something in the Bible. First of all, let's address who Palestine is. Is the word Palestine in the Bible? The answer is no. There is no such thing as Palestine in the Bible. The root word for Palestine in Hebrew is the word flishtim. And that means occupiers and so if you say if you we use the word palestine we're using the word occupiers and so they're occupying territory that doesn't belong to them so there's no such thing as palestine palestine is something that was uh in 70 a.d when uh, the uh, romans came in and uh, desecrated the temple and destroyed jerusalem and occupied the area they changed actually the word of uh of, of the arabs to palestine to the uh, Felish team. Goliath was was a, a Felish team. You know, Second Kings uh, 18, uh, 18, 8. He also conquered the Philistines. Okay. This is speaking about Israel conquering the Philistines. And, and actually in Second Kings verse 18, uh, 18, verse 8, it speaks about Gaza. And so the Philistines have always been the occupiers in Gaza. There's a reason why the why this war and this attack on Israel came from Gaza. It's not just a coincidence. It's been like that. First of all, all the uh, uh, King, da uh, King David's wars, all the wars against uh, the Philistines, everything came out of Gaza. Samson, when he uh, when he gave up, you know, when he right. died over there, that was in Gaza as well. And so all the wars came out of Gaza. And so that's not a coincidence either. There are many, many Bible verses that show that that, that show this. And so. Also, uh, the word Hamas, the word Hamas is in the Bible as well, in connection with Gaza, in many, many places in the Bible. It's over, there's over 55 Bible verses that speak about, about uh, the word Hamas. You're not going to see the word Hamas in English, uh, but you will see it in Hebrew. When you see, uh, for example, in, uh, let me pull this up right over here. I'll pull a few Bible verses that talk about the Hamas and the Gaza Strip. It, it, it means violence in English. That's correct. It means violence in Israel, violence and destruction. And so you see this in uh, Isaiah 5, verse 20. You see this in uh, Ezekiel 7, verse 11. You see that in all these Bible per, uh, passages that speak about violence, and that's Hamas. And so you see Gaza, Hamas, violence, the attack against Israel. But what's the real spiritual warfare behind this? The real spiritual warfare is in Psalms 83. Where they they say let, uh, let, uh, they lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, "Come, let us wipe out the nation of Israel, be remembered no more." And so, this is what it's speaking about. The context of Psalms eighty three, if you continue to read the whole chapter, is speaking about the Philistines. It's it's the context is in the Gaza Strip. You keep on reading uh, the word Philistine in, in, in 83, you see the word Tyre, and you see the word Assyria. Well, what's Philistine? That's in the Gaza Strip. That's the occupiers, the Palestinians. What's Tyre? Tyre speaks about Lebanon. We see what's happening in Lebanon right now. Psalms 83 speaks about Assyria. That's Syria right now coming from the east. And so we see all this battle against Israel prophesied in the Bible, and we're living in that prophecy right now. Am I saying that we're living direct in, in Psalms 83 right now? Well, first of all, Psalms 83 is a is a, a compound prophecy. And so it speaks about before, it speaks about now, it speaks about future. But it also is a prophecy that moves in motion. It's a precursor to actually to Ezekiel 38. Although the nations mentioned in uh, Isaiah 83, uh, in uh, Psalms 83 and in Ezekiel 38, are not exactly the same nations, but it's a precursor to Psalms 80, uh, Ezekiel 38. A lot of people like to ask me, we get a lot of emails, are we living right now? Are we seeing Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 38? The answer is yes and no. We're seeing Ezekiel 38 being, being uh, you know, moving up as a precursor. Are we living in Ezekiel 38 right now? I don't think we're there yet, but we need to remember that it can happen overnight. I do think it is a precursor to Ezekiel 38.
I think that's really important to understand too. You know, um, people keep asking because we've just gone through New Year's, right? And I keep getting that same question: What's going to happen in twenty four? And it's like we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We are guaranteed. Today's the day of salvation. Today's when you need to make your peace with the Lord. And and something you said a little bit ago um, about the Messiah, baby Jesus Yeshua. It's curious to me. The wise men, right? The magi, they came looking. They they saw the signs, like we're seeing the signs today of his second coming, and and the wise men that were the consul of King Arad, they knew he was going to be born in Bethlehem because he he called them in. So where's this baby going to be born? So they said Bethlehem. They knew this. How far is that? They could have walked there to check it out, right? But they never bothered. Why is that? So here's wow. the information, right? We it's like today we got the information. It's right here. Um, just like there was that doctor that was on the program, who was Jesse Ventrilla, uh, whatever his name is, uh, hosted a show back in 2004, and she said, "I'm leaving America because they're they're going to bring in a forced vaccination." How did she know that 20 years earlier? Right, the cabal. I mean, they've been planning this stuff for years. And what you're talking about right here, this this stuff is it's it's a spirit behind it. It's a demonic spirit that's been setting up for years and years, the, 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 and it's just going to bring. We're at that point where you know the Lord's coming back. But who is behind this demonic spirit? Well, we know that Satan is and his demons. Right. Who is behind Hamas? It's Iran. Now, Iran in the Bible speaks about um, Persian. You see in the word Persian in, 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 in the Bible, like in the Esther, the book of Esther, the book of Daniel, that's speaking about Iran. We go back to the time of Haman. That was Iran. That was that spirit coming against Israel. But in the book of Daniel, and we know that uh, Daniel was praying to seek revelation. He asked revelation from God. And the angel comes to him, the messenger, and he tells Daniel that he's been delayed for 21 days. Now, that's very much prophetic because what, why was he delayed and who is, he, who is he delayed by? That's the question here. And in Daniel uh, 10, verses 12 to 13, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will read uh, from verse 13. But the prince of Persian, which is Iran, resisted me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me. Because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So we see right now that this spirit of this Iranian spirit is a spirit because he's speaking about a king of Persia here. He's not speaking about a physical king here. He's speaking about spiritual warfare. Daniel was delayed for, I mean, Daniel's revelation was delayed for 21 days because of the spirit of Iran. That same spirit is working through Hamas right now. It's working through uh, Ezekiel 38, Psalms 20, 83. We're seeing that right now. And so that is that 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 king of Persia is where the spiritual warfare is. Nothing's changed in two thousand years. But as we exhalate to a higher level of persecution against Israel, and because Satan knows that his time is near, Revelation twelve twelve, we're going to see more of this Iranian king. When you see physical Iran right now, there's a spirit behind that. What's that spirit? It's the same spirit that detained um, the revelation of Daniel and the prayers of Daniel for 21 days. Now, people like to ask me, why, why 21 days? Why is Slim Vechad Yom in Hebrew? Well, 21 in the Bible represents what? Represents seven times three. And seven times three is God's perfect number. And so he was delayed for 21 days, but after 21 days, the perfect 777 released that blessing. Mm -hmm. And so that, that means that sometimes you and I pray, sometimes people are, and you think your prayers are not being answered, you need to know that there's spiritual warfare out there. There's a spirit of Persia operating through demons that is trying to delay your prayer. But God said the perfect seven is going to release that blessing. And so that's something to hold on. And so a lot of times people people know that the news is, is saying Iran is behind this, Iran is behind that. Yes, it, yes, they are because of this dark spirit that we're dealing with. I, the Iranian president right now, that's just a man. You got to look at the spirit behind the man. You got to look at the spirit behind Haman. You have to look at the spirit behind Hitler. All these, and I'm behind Hitler too, I'm sure that was the same Persia spirit 
let's wipe out the nation of Israel. Isaiah 60, verse 18, and I am going to read that, gives us a promise. And that's a promise for every believer here. Isaiah 16, 60, verse, eight, uh, verse 18, no longer will violence be heard in your land. That means no longer will Hamas be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction with your borders, but you will call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Now, what's the word for salvation in Hebrew? It's the word Yeshua. Now let's read it in Hebrew. No longer will Hamas be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls Yeshua and your gates praise. What is God saying here? He's saying all this evil that we see right here is going to come to an end. And at the end, what stands is the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth, and the walls will be called Yeshua and your gates praise. This is a foreshadow of the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. but it also tells us that we have to preach the gospel. We have to stand firm in prayer, like you say, in worship, and not to give up. And to understand that this Hamas, this evil spirit all over the world, is going to be no more. Because that's what the Bible speaks about. It speaks about the book of Revelation. That's a foreshadow of the book of Revelation. Because everything in the Old, Old Testament is a shadow of the New. Where it says, the mystery Babylon in a day will be wiped out. That's what it's speaking about right here. That's what the foreshadow is. And so there's a promise. Having said that, we live in a fallen world, and we see the heartbreaking situation. Our hearts go out to them. And I do want to talk about the people of uh, the, the Arab people. I don't like to call them Palestinians because we touched on the word Palestinian. The word Palestinian means occupier. And so if we uh, identify them as occupiers, we're actually grieving the Holy Spirit because God said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We need to identify them as who they are. They are they're, they're the Arabs. Uh, there was a promise given to Ishmael in the Bible. We know that. that and we see that with uh, Dubai, the Amorites. We see that with, uh, with Saudi Arabia. We see that with the wealth that they have, with the businesses that they have. That's the promise of Ishmael. Mm. And so, but it, with, it, within that promise, God also gave Israel a promise. And he said, Genesis chapter 3, through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And so the borders of Israel are very clear. And we, we love the Arab people. We love all people. But we can't love people over righteousness. And so we're not coming against the, the Arab people. We're coming against terrorism. We're coming against Hamas. We're coming against this evil. And I want to talk about this evil here is because a lot of the news is trying everything they can to suppress what they, to suppress what they can. I, we put out YouTube videos. We have to drive them to rumble because we can't, we can't, you know, we can't show pictures or exactly tell what's happening. But what you see on the news and what you've heard on the news is not even 15% of what's real happening. And I think it's important for the believers around the world to know what's happening here in Israel. Because if you're praying for Israel and you know what you're praying about, your prayer is much more effective. And so it's not a secret that women were raped. It's not a secret that babies were beheaded. But there was a lot more worse things uh, done than that, uh, uh, Pastor Casper. I don't want to get too graphic here, but I do need to explain to the people the things that we're not just talking about rumors. We're talking about testimonies and evidence that the IDF has, has, has uncovered. We're talking about what the Israeli government has uncovered. There was a 45-minute video release that was shown to the UN, that was shown to Biden, that was shown to uh, other nations in the world to let them watch this 45 uh, uh, minute video that you, they can't even put it on telegram. It's so horrific. And so I'm going to give one testimony here. I visited the family. Uh, and so I know this, this testimony is true. They have, they have the footage of it. And so the, this is just one, one of the horrific stories. Okay. And so what happened was Hamas goes in on October 7, they butcher people. They take the family, they sit them down, they tie them up. They take the woman, they rape the woman next to the husband. Then they shoot her next to the husband. This is, this is not a story. This, this happened. The next, the next thing I'm going to say is very difficult, but I need people to understand this. They took a baby and they put him, the baby in, uh, in the oven alive. As the father is watching this, they burn the baby alive. 
Then after he saw this, they shot the father. And so this is just, this is exactly what my, these are the stories that my grandfather used to tell. He was a Holocaust survivor. This is what, I mean, at least what Hitler does, probably even worse. And so this is the, that spirit that's going crazy, Revelation 12, 12, as he knows that his time is near. These are, these are I don't want to get too graphic. This is as graphic as I'm going to get. But this is the stuff that the people of Israel have been exposed to, the families have been exposed to. And we're, our ministry is doing what they can to reach these people. We're reaching Holocaust survivors. We're reaching um, these family victims, whoever, what, whatever's left from these family victims. I mean, there's a, a brother left somewhere or a mother left someone somewhere. Of, we're reaching the kidnapped people that were returned back to Israel. They're going through a tremendous... Uh, uh, spiritual warfare. They don't know it's spiritual warfare, but it is. We're reaching them with the gospel, with the love of Yeshua. And so even the people that came back, they'll never be the same again. And so the world, a lot of the world is saying, you know, you, you're, it didn't happen. That's what they said in the Holocaust. No, it happened. I'm, I'm, I'm Zef Port, and I'm telling you, I'm here in Israel. It happened, and we're not going to let it be suppressed. Yes, we know that it's spiritual warfare, but we also know that we live in a fallen world, and this heartbreaking situation needs to be dealt with by the believer spiritually, but at all, we also need to have compassion over these people, what they're going through in, here in Israel. I'm not just talking about people losing their jobs and losing their homes. That That's that, that's a small part of it. I'm talking about people that are going to be, uh, a lot of them being being you know sent to psychiatrists. Now we we as believers don't send people to psychiatrists, but we are going to those places, those psychiatrist places, and trying to tell them, guys, this is not the solution. The solution is the Word of God. The solution, the solution is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who loves you. Yes, you went through a difficult time. Yes, you saw what happened to your family members, but you're alive today because God has a message for you. And a lot of people like to ask. I used to ask my grandfather. Uh, where was God in the Holocaust? Where was he? So people are asking these questions right now. And the answer is, after I received the Holy Spirit, after I, I, I understood that Yeshua is the Messiah, the answer that I received was, God was is always there. God's always been close to his word. His people have left his word, have left God, and that's what happens. Now, I'm, I'm, yeah. God is not the author of evil. Pastor Casper, mm -hmm. a lot of people saying God did this. God didn't do this, but God allowed it. We live in a fallen world. He's given us free choices, um, no matter what uh, the fools like the um, the fools in the heart, like Gavel Noah Harari says, there's no more free will. Well, he's using his free will to, to lie to you about that. Um, th these are just um, heartbreaking um, accounts that, and I know. They've done things like that to purposely, you know, split personalities. That's how you cause a schizophrenic to, 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 to put them through such traumatic events. So when you look at this 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 horrendous animosity that's going on all the way back to to Abraham, the the, the Jews descendant of Abraham's son Isaac, the Arabs uh, descendant of um, Ishmael, um, the, the son of a slave woman, right? So now we, there's this conflict that um, obviously there's some. The Ishmael mocking Isaac, it's in Genesis uh, is it 21. Um, and Sarah tells, you know, Abram, you're to send Hagar and Ishmael away. And then there's, it's, it's, um, the angel, you know, tells him, you know, he's going to be the father of a great nation. But interestingly, uh, Ishmael is also what's called the wild donkey of a man. At, 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 yes. And he said, his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand's going to be against him. He's going to live in hostility. With his brothers, you know, all the days, and so this is this ancient root of bitterness, the spirit of bitterness between Isaac and Ishmael that's been, you know, manifesting in, in these people, the ones that are being programmed to do the. How, how anybody in the right mind could do such horrendous things to uh, to another human being is, is beyond comprehension. It, and, it, and then I, when demonic. look at. I, we look at um, in the Quran, it, it contains, you know, contradictory instructions of Muslim regarding Jews. And, and so I think there's some place where it says, you know, that they're the Muslims should treat Jews as brothers. And then it contradicts itself and says, you know, Muslims should attack Jews that refuse to convert to um, 
this is long. And then it also introduces this, you know, conflict with um, the Quran saying, you know, Ishmael's the, the was the, the, the son that was sacrificed to the Lord, not Isaac. Obviously, that goes against the almighty word of God in Genesis uh, 22. And I think that's, you know, where we're seeing a lot of this going on. Um, so now we've got this political um, conflict. We've got, you know, a spiritual conflict behind it. Um, and all these, you know, these these nations, um, around, I mean, you could tell us, you know, Israel, when we look at a map, it's I almost have to take a magnifying glass. It's a tiny piece of land, right? The, all the other nations around it that are attacking have a tremendous amount of land. So we've got a spirit of envy and jealousy going on. We've got a spirit of greed. Um, there's, there's the hostility between this. And, and let's also, you know, point out that not every Arab, you know, agrees with this this ideology, uh, and and not every Jew believes that the other. You know, there's innocent people being caught in the crossfire here, on both sides of the the conflict. Uh, absolutely, I mean, uh, we city of Haifa, city of Akko, here in Israel. You can go to an apartment building and you'll see fifty percent or sixty percent are Arabs, the other forty percent are Jews living together, and the. They don't. They don't think. Uh, they don't. They're not in agreement with uh, with this. We're speaking here about terrorism. This is not. Uh, it has nothing to do with Arabs and Jews. This has to do with terrorists, the Amalek spirit, the Persian king spirit, Iran. This is what it's all about over here. Trying to divide. Uh, really, the battle is over the the gospel. Now you mentioned you mentioned uh, Israel, such a small little tiny country. Right now we have nine point uh, three million people with the Arabs. 12 years ago, we only had 6 million here. And so, I mean, it may not look like a lot, but 3 million uh, people in, in, in 10 or 11 years, that's a lot for Israel. And so it's another uh, sign of the end times. And so, uh, yeah, we're not coming against the Arab people. We're coming against terrorism. Mm. That's clear. And so people need to understand that. Well, I, I think you're you're helping explain that right now. So we we need to be praying against this this conflict, and and what you, you're dealing with is you know identifying the fact that Hamas and Has all I mean these are terrorist organization. No matter what the news mainstream media refuses to call them terrorists, but they're terrorists. They're they're doing horrendous acts, uh, inhuman acts, things that monsters you know are capable of doing only demons can do what they do it has to be it's a demonic spirit a human being can't do what they do i mean they don't have a heart they don't have a soul they don't have anything i mean they're there's they're demons but we are to um mourn with those who mourn you know and we're to live in harmony with one another and uh you know, be willing to, the, the, you know, reach out to any of God's creation and then bless them as best we can. So I, I think a lot of the, I mean, let, let's look at this. I mean, the, these terrorist groups have got a mindset deliberately targeting civilians, right? Because they're cowards, right? What does a coward do? They, they came in and they, they attack people that can't fight back. That's what a coward does. So they're all a bit, you know, and, and yeah, going against uh, women, going against children, going against uh, uh, teenagers, going against elderly people, 85, 90 years old, that can barely move. Right. Kidnapping them, torturing them. And so you mentioned Israel being a small country. Uh, Israel is the center of ground zero. That's where it started. That's where it's going to end. Also in the spiritual realm. And so if Israel is at war, if Drew, the world's at war. If Israel's at peace, the world's at peace. And we see this. It's the center of everything. And Satan knows it's the center of everything. Although the Bible says that Satan's headquarters is where? It's in minor Asia, which is Turkey. Book of Revelation tells us that. But the battle from Turkey and from Iran and from all these nations that are supporting what Hamas is doing here, where is it coming from? It's coming from those headquarters. The headquarters of Persia. The headquarters of Turkey. That's where it's coming from. You're right. And then Israel is God's holy, you know, Jerusalem is holy city. So this is all about God's city. It's his. Right, Pastor Castor, but God, once again, he promises us something. Ezekiel 45, verse 9. I love to quote the Old Testament because we just see the book of Revelation in front of our eyes. 
Thus says the Lord God, let us uh, suffice you, O princesses of Israel, remove violence. There we go again. Remove Hamas and spoil and execute judgment and justice. Take away, uh, you know, exhaustions from my people, says the Lord. So what God is saying right now, first of all, we know that Israel is going to win this, this war, no matter what, how many casualties are going to be, because God said so. God said he's going to protect Israel. God said, and he's going to protect Israel for the purpose of Yeshua has to return. His feet must land on the Mount of Olives. Just like he was crucified in Jerusalem, his feet are going to land on the Mount of Olives. And it's a sign of grace to bring the people into salvation. But Hamas, uh, they're going to be defeated right now in the physical realm and, of course, eventually in the spiritual realm. That's a promise from the Word of God. My new book that's uh, coming out right now is, as we speak, uh, Blood Alliance. Mm -hmm. gets into that subject uh, very deep. speaks about uh, Easter. It speaks about Constantine. It speaks about uh, uh, how Constantine uh, you know, wrote things uh, against the Jewish people. Once again, Psalms 83, let us wipe out the nation mm -hmm. of Israel. And so that led to the Crusades, that led to Hitler, that led to uh, um, replacement theology, and that even led to some people saying Israel today is not the true Israel. Well, you know who defines the true Israel? The Word of God. Um, Only the Word of God can define the true Israel. And the Word of God definitely says that we are living right now in the true Israel, but we're not living in the eternal Israel. There's a big difference. And so judgment will come to the world, and this world will cease, including Israel, but eternal Israel will be forever. And so all the nations that want to wipe out Israel, not only will they not succeed, they can't succeed, according to the Word of God. Because every time, as you mentioned, the, the Six-Day War, you mentioned the Yom Kippur War, you mentioned the other wars, uh, even before 1948, Always Israel was victorious. And even if they weren't victorious for a temper, it was all temporary. God always brought them back. God always gave them grace. Even when the, the, when the 10 uh, tribes were scattered. And one of the reasons that God allowed all this scatter was for the gospel to go to the nations. It's part of God's master plan. Now it's time for the nations to be involved to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. What does the enemy do? What does that Persian spirit do? He tries to tell you, you can't bring the gospel back to Jerusalem because Israel is not the real Israel right now. And so I have I go into a very deep study on all that subject in my book, mm -hmm. Blood Alliance, which really is trying to stop all believers from crossing the final threshold. Where is the final threshold? It's the kingdom of God. That's where it is. That's what the battle is all about. And so it's important uh, to know how we're preaching here the gospel here in Israel. It's... Uh, the enemy doesn't want us to preach the gospel. The enemy wants us to say, now there's a war in Israel. We need to hide. We need No, we're not going to hide. On the contrary, we're preaching the gospel even more right now here in Israel because the people need it. We're reaching even more people uh, with humanitarian aid, as I mentioned before, with food vouchers, right. with uh, the love of Yeshua, and with comforting them with these Bible verses, the promises because you know it's very difficult to go to a Jew with a new test new 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 testament because they don't believe in the new testament that's not to say that we can't use it we've done that before but mostly we go through the old testament and we show them Hamas and we show them what's happening right now and we show them the promises of God and a lot of them get encouraged by it and so that's what we're doing here we're we're seeing a lot of salvations a lot of follow ups here in Israel right now but also, we're also seeing a lot of people that are saying, I'm done with God. I don't want to see God. God took my son away. He took my daughter away. And so mm -hmm. that's the struggle also as we're preaching the gospel is we have to explain to them we live in a fallen world. Right. God didn't do that. Uh, and so there, there's hope. And so that, that, that's, that's the struggle here in Israel. It's dangerous here in Israel. I was in Jerusalem yesterday. Uh, I've never seen anything like it, Pastor Casper. Jerusalem uh, streets were empty. Empty. I usually drive in traffic. There's no traffic in Jerusalem. I got mm -hmm. to the hotel to the to the hotel in, in in 15 minutes from the entrance of uh, of Jerusalem. It usually takes me 45 minutes. Why? Because people are scared. Number one, there's less tourism right now in Israel. No tourism. And number two, people just don't go to Jerusalem uh, because they're scared. They're scared of uh, of you know the, there's a bus is going to blow up. They're scared of of terrorism. 
This is this is a situation here in Israel. And so the land, the holy land of Israel, people are scared to walk in their own streets. And so we we reach out to the people um, in the Kotel area, in the old city, and tell them, don't be afraid. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is protecting you. Bible says in the book of Psalms, the God of Israel never sleeps and he never slumbers. And so you're supposed to have fear, but it's supposed to be the fear of the Lord. Right. It's not supposed to be a fear of Hamas. How, how could hiding in the cleft of the rocks benefit anyone? It didn't work for the armies surrounding a young King David take it down Goliath. You know, it appears to me that the Jews rejected Yeshua because he failed in their eyes to do what they expected the Messiah to do. He, they thought he would destroy all the evil, destroy all their enemies, um, establish an eternal kingdom, you know, and they would be the preeminent nation of, of the world. Um, and then, as I think you shared with me, they, they skip over Isaiah 53. They don't want to read it in the temple, right? They, they, they skip over Psalm 22 about the suffering Messiah. They want to ignore those things. Um, they want to ignore you know, the prophecies that, that um, they just want to you know, ignore the, 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 his crucifixion and, and the, the glories. We think of that as such a great tragedy when it was greatest victory that he came for that reason, the, the sacrificial lamb of God. I know years ago I was looking through some of the commentaries in the Talmud and the, the oral traditions written down. Um, and it always amazed me that um, when when the Lord Jesus Yeshua healed the blind man uh, using modern spittle, it, it said right there, you know, like don't don't try to heal somebody with modern spit. And he's going, this is what I think of your traditions. You just made this stuff up. Look, I'm gonna take some mud, some spit, and heal the blind man. So those um, those messianic prophecies, like in Isaiah 53, Psalm 22. I, I think they just, you know, they're confused over these things because they don't study them, they don't understand it, and and they, 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 they you know, the Jewish people going after you know, Moses, right? He spoke about what would come, the deliverer, uh, the Roman bondage. Um, we had uh, even um, the disciples, original disciples, James and John. You know, they remember when he, they said. Uh, can we, we get to sit at your right hand, you know, or the left on and the kingdom when you come? So they were expecting that, right? That that was the mindset that um he was going to deliver them at that point in time. Absolutely. I mean, when when yeah. the, right, I mean, that's why they were shouting Hosanna one day, and the next day they're they're going along with you know the, the crowd being stood up by the 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 Bill Gates of Hell Foundation in their, their era, you know, the crucify him. Right. You mentioned Isaiah 53. It's called the Forbidden Chapter. I remember growing up as a as a Jew uh, before I believed in Yeshua. We were not allowed to read that chapter. And uh, we just, you know, the rabbi said, don't read it. Just skip over from 52, in fact, all the way to 54 in the middle. Don't even touch that. And so uh, there are two commentaries, rabbinic commentaries. One is Rashi. The other one is Radak. Uh, I think we spoke about it in previous years. Rashi says that Isaiah 53 seems to resemble Christianity, but it's not. It's speaking about Israel. Therefore, we recommend you not to read it. And it has been called the forbidden chapter. Mm. My question is, when I preach the gospel here in Israel, I like to ask uh, not only Orthodox Jews, even secular Jews, uh, was this Bible written for man? And they say, yes. Uh, did God forbid us to read anything in the Bible? And they said, no. So why are they forbidden chapters? And this is where they start thinking, uh, you're right about that. Uh, why would God write a Bible and then forbid it? If, it? if he doesn't want you to read it, he won't put it in the Bible. That's true. So, and so, you know, we know what the what it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so one of the enemy's tools to get Jews and all people away from the gospel is by telling them this is forbidden, don't read it. And so once they start reading it, and uh, they realize that speaking about the Messiah, it's speaking about Yeshua. This is where we can bring him into salvation. And you mentioned uh, Moses. Uh, to a Jewish person, and even to me before I believed in Yeshua, Moses was a great lawgiver. Everything is Moses, Moses, Moses. And so Moses, in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter uh, uh, 18, speaks about there's going to come a prophet. He's like me, but he's greater than me, it says in Hebrew. You must listen to him. Speaking about Messiah Yeshua, he's going to be from your brethren. 
And so uh, if we can get them to see who is Moses speaking about and get into those Bible verses that you're speaking about, uh, Micah 5.2, uh, Psalms 22, uh, Isaiah 53, if we can get them just to read that, then the Holy Spirit can open their eyes to see that Yeshua he is the Messiah, and he is the, the, the true uh, hope of Israel. He is the king of Israel, king of kings, Lord of lords. And, and so that that that's exactly what we need to do. And uh, that's Please. why it's so important that people don't say this is not the true Israel. People don't say that uh, the Jews murdered uh, Jesus like Constantine said. Well, first of all, did Jesus, can you murder Jesus? Can you murder Yeshua? Not according to the Bible. He said, I laid down my life. I and no one takes it from me, and I'm paraphrasing. So that's not, Yeshua laid down his life. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he said, it is finished, it is done. And he gave up his spirit. No one can kill him. It was God's master plan. And so saying that the Jews murdered him or the Romans murdered him, no one can murder him. That's already, uh, you know, there's something wrong over there biblically. Right. And so when you, have, uh, when you have such a hatred, how can you preach the gospel to these people? It's better to say, let us, you know, let, 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 let us have replacement theology uh, let us have our own feast, nothing to do with God's feast. Let's change everything around, just like the book of Daniel speaks about in Daniel 7.25. He'll, he'll, 7 he'll seek to change times and seasons. And that's exactly what the enemy is trying to do, to get the believers away from the true gospel and to get the Jews away from any gospel. And in the midst of that, Hamas and all the attacks against Israel— through the generations, we saw that in the book of Esther, we saw it with Hitler, we saw it with uh, Saddam Hussein, we saw it, and we're going to continue to see it because God told Moses, you will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But he also told them, but I will wipe out the name of Amalek from under heaven. That's the promise again of the book of Revelation or the book of Ezekiel. And so we have to stand on the promise. Right. We can't only stand on, on, on what's happening today. We need to look further, just like Abraham saw the kingdom. The book of Hebrews speaks about it. Abraham saw something greater. And so we need to see that. And if we, if we see that and stand on that, we'll be able to be a light in this dark world and preach the gospel. That's, what keeps, that's how we keep on going here in Israel. I can tell you that uh, I have to go around with people that have, uh, you know, that, I mean, I trust in God. I trust he's going to protect me. But it's so dangerous here in Israel that we do walk around with people in the ministry that have guns. Now, you may, you're you sitting in the United States or somewhere else. You say, okay, anybody can buy a gun in the United States. That's true. But not everybody can buy a gun here in Israel. So it's not easy to get a license here in Israel, and it's not easy to buy a gun. And so we do have some uh, some people that work in, uh, in the IDF and work in other places that are believers, that are following us and uh, protecting us uh, on the physical realm, as Yeshua is protecting us in the spiritual, because it is danger. You never know when somebody can come out and just, just right. shoot. Whether we live or die, we're the Lord's. Um, I want to go back to something you, you mentioned in Romans. I, I recall in, the Apostle Paul tells the church, he, he talked about spiritual blindness somewhere in, in Romans. Um, for thousands of years now, you know, they, they've been spiritually blind. Um, they're, they're, they're just not interested in, you know, the, um, the, I, I think it's because it goes back to the written word and the Ten Commandments, which nobody's keeping, right? They can't do it. And but this is like this this um veil that not only is covered the world with you know the, the whole pharmaceutical lie, uh, which we read in Revelations, you know, 18, how the, the great merchants, the the Bill Gates and the Gates of Health Foundation, the World Health Organization is gonna blind, you know, deceive all the nations with pharmaceutical. Um, but there's a spiritual blindness that fell upon the eyes of the Jewish people. Um, they're not able, because before that, they were the most spiritually discerning people on earth. And then Paul's explaining, um, you know, they've hardened their hearts. And um, uh, so I, I, th I think, it, you know, um, again, that's part of that rejection, um, that spirit of rejecting the, the Messiah because he didn't do it the way they thought it was supposed to be done. The, he, didn't the fit, he didn't fit their, their charts and graphics. Right, which is like a lot of people today. They're not. They're not getting how close we are to the return of Christ. Right, so, right. So, uh, what you're speaking about Romans 11, but it does say, especially if you read it in uh, the Hebrew, they're blinded in part, mm. which means they're not fully blinded. 
Right. For, for this reason, they do understand some basic things in the Bible. I mean, they're reading the same Bible you're reading. They're reading the same Bible I'm reading. They're reading it under rabbinic interpretations. That's part of the enemy's tool, uh, and that's the part blinded. Uh, but the veil is being lifted. Uh, as I said, in, it's God's master plan. Romans 11, 25, and Romans 11, 26, they kind of go together. Romans 11, they build up together. Romans 11, 25 says, until the fullness of the nations, or some Bible verses say, until the fullness of the Gentiles. I would say fullness of the nations is a more accurate translation based on the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the word Gentiles, what does a Gentile mean? It mean a Gentile in Hebrew means out of covenant. And so you can't be a Gentile believer because you can't be an out of covenant believer. You can be a believer that's from the nations. You were once a Gentile. You became a believer in Yeshua. And now you're in covenant with Yeshua. And so you're part of the, the commonwealth of Israel. And so I tend to think that Romans 11, 25 should say the fullness of the nations. And then when we read in Romans 11, 26, and then all Israel shall be saved. And so all Israel here, and I get into it in my book also as well, is speaking about spiritual Israel and physical Israel. It's not speaking about the nation of Israel that every single believer, every single Jew in Israel is going to be saved, although that's our prayer. But that's not what it means. It right. means that when there's a certain number that only God knows, which is the bride of Yeshua, the remnant, when that fullness comes in, then all Israel shall be saved. Who's all Israel? It's Romans 11, 15 to 17, and Romans 11, 23, Jews, physical Jews that come into Messiah Yeshua and the nations that get grafted into spiritual Israel. This is the, the, the beautiful picture. The enemy wants to divide that, wants to say there is no real Israel, there is no uh, feast of the Lord, Let's uh, let's let's listen to what Constantine says. Let's listen, to, and this is again that spirit that wants to destroy Israel, whether believers know it or not. It's the same spirit that right. wants to destroy Israel. It's nothing's changed. The, the Genesis three fifteen uh, prophecy that happened is running through humanity. Right, and I, will not stop until Yeshua returns. Historically, whenever the church is being persecuted like this. It just keeps growing. Um, yes. So, and the good news right now is that many Jews are turning to Christ as a Messiah. Um, the Lord always has his remnant, believing, um, gathers um, together. And I, I think in America, uh, it's estimated that over 100,000 Jewish believers now in, in Yeshua. So, and it's, it's the numbers are growing all the time. So, um, I think we're probably at the end of this uh, time for the program looking forward to getting you back on as soon as possible but um how can we best have people praying for you right now in your ministry you know that i i have to touch on that subject one second about the believers take your time you know, take I, your time I, when i get emails from people or the ministry gets emails from people the first mm -hmm. thing you know that that we look at is uh, is this a fake email is this are they trying to persecute us here is this yad lahim i mean that's the way we operate we have to pray and so we started to get a lot of emails during the war of, of testimonies of, of, of Israelis that are saying, you know, we believe in, in, in Yeshua. What do we do? And so we think it's a trap. But we find out that, no, a lot of it, a lot of them are coming to faith in Yeshua. And we give all the So God is using uh, this evil and turning it into good, as the Bible says. Why? Because people are turning to God. They're opening their Bible. They're not opening. They're not going to rabbinic Judaism. They're going to the word of God in context or reading it. And as the Bible promises, we're having visions, we're having uh, visitations, as the book of Joel speaks about. We're living in those times right now. And so I want to encourage the believers around the world, continue to pray for Israel, as it says in Psalms 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And the only peace that, that's ever going to be in Israel or our, around the world or anywhere is through the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, Jesus, Isaiah 9, 6. And so you ask what people can do. They can pray uh, for us as we go out to preach the gospel for protection, for wisdom, and pray for those who lost their, their loved ones, that they would be strong and they would come to know Yeshua as their personal uh, Savior. Pray for the family members, that the ones that have been released from Gaza and the ones that still have family members in Gaza that we don't even know if they're alive. Uh, they would come out and just have mercy, or even over there, right there in Gaza, they'll, they'll have a visitation and come to know that Yeshua is the Messiah. That's the most important thing. Uh, the, our bodies are temporary. We're looking at the eternal. 
And so uh, if you want to uh, participate in what we're doing here in Israel, go to messiahofisraelministries.org. Uh, you can uh, participate in prayer or you can give a donation for humanitarian aid or for the gospel, whatever God puts in your heart. There are plenty of things that can be done. That's what we're doing here in Israel. And I want to thank you, uh, Pastor Casper, for your ministry and everything that you're doing and all the prayers of, of the people in your congregation and other congregations. Your prayers are working. One thing is certain, the rabbinic movement here in Israel, they're not going to pray for us. The ones that pray for us is the body of Yeshua. Most of them are in the United States and other places of the world. So thank you for that. 